Welcome to the channel. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at the tomato clownfish. The clownfish has become the standard bearer for the aquarium hobby, and especially for the marine or saltwater side of things. Over time, many different species of clownfish have been introduced into the hobby. The tomato clownfish happens to be one of the most eye-catching versions of the clownfish. Is it the right fish for you, though? Let's find out. Natural Habitat the tomato clownfish, or Amphiprion fernatus, is an adorable fish that is primarily native to the tropical waters of the western Pacific Ocean. They can also be found in other parts of the Pacific where the conditions are favorable. This usually means the warm waters of tropical reefs. Their favorite spot to hang out is among the bubble tip anemone and adhesive anemone. Like most clownfish, though, most of the tomato clownfish available in the hobby are captive bred these days and are quite readily available at great prices. Physical Description the tomato clownfish can sometimes be referred to as the red clownfish or bridled clownfish. They have the classic clownfish ovoid shape. As juveniles, they resemble a common clownfish with their orange coloration and three vertical stripes. However, as they grow older, they develop their own look. The second and third stripes disappear and they develop a deeper and more brilliant red coloration. This can develop in a slightly brownish color in the dominant female. They can grow to a maximum size of 5 inches or 13 centimeters, which is on the larger side for a clownfish. Before I continue, can you do me a favor and tap that like button? It really does help us out. Alright, back to it. Ideal Tank Setup Clownfish in general, and the tomato clownfish in particular, are among the hardiest saltwater fish in the hobby. As such, they aren't very demanding, and there is some leeway when it comes to the tank setup. However, as always, there is a right way of doing things. Start with a decent-sized tank. While a pair of these fish can be kept in a 20-gallon tank, we would recommend at least a 30-gallon tank. The fish will love it, and you will have to worry less about sudden changes in the water parameters. A big question with regards to the setup is whether you should get the bubble tip anemone. While your fish will love it, and it's cool to see how they interact with the anemone, it is crucial to remember that the anemone is a lot more difficult to care for. Go for the anemone only if you are able to cope with its demanding nature. If you feel that it's not worth the hassle, then it isn't a big deal, as tomato clownfish do just fine without an anemone. Apart from that, set up the tank any way you want. Just leave plenty of open spaces and make sure to install high-quality equipment. Water Parameters These fish can live up to a decade, and some for even 15 years in some cases with proper care, and for that, you need to be aware of the ideal water parameters. Keeping the water conditions as stable as possible and within these ideal values will ensure that you get to enjoy the company of your tomato clownfish for many years to come. The ideal water parameters for the tomato clownfish are as follows. Temperature, 72 degrees Fahrenheit to 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 22 degrees Celsius to 27 degrees Celsius. pH, 8.0 to 8.4. Specific gravity, 1.020 to 1.024. As you can see, the different parameters have a wider range than most saltwater fish. They are quite hardy and this makes them one of the most beginner-friendly marine fish. Diet, their undemanding nature extends to their diet as well. This is one of those fish that you will rarely have trouble feeding. They will readily accept almost anything as long as it can fit in their mouths. Live food, frozen food, dried food, flakes, and pellets are all fair game. The challenge is often to feed them a balanced diet without overfeeding them. Offer them a healthy mix of meaty and plant-based food. Remove anything that is uneaten after a minute. Feed them twice a day. Behavior and Tank Mates the tomato clownfish has some interesting behavioral traits. It's not docile by any means, but it isn't a complete lunatic either. It's a bit more aggressive than many other clownfish. As long as you choose the right tank mates, you can have a pretty harmonious community tank for yourself. The fish to avoid are anything large and or aggressive. Also, avoid other clownfish as most of them can breed with the tomato clownfish and you don't want that. Some great options for tank mates for these fish include damselfish. Pygmy angelfish, basslets, yellow tanks, dartfish, wrasses, and blood red fire shrimp. Make sure that the tank is adequately large enough to house all these additional fish if you're looking to set up a community tank. Breeding Like all other clownfish, getting these fish to breed isn't difficult at all. The easiest way is to get a breeding pair in a breeding tank. However, if that isn't possible, then just get a few juveniles. They will eventually form a hierarchy. Then comes the coolest part. All juveniles are males, but as they mature, the most dominant member, which is usually also the largest, will change its gender and become a female. 
If that female is removed, then the next most dominant member will become the female. Once the eggs are laid, it is advisable to remove the adults and cover the sides of the aquarium to create a dark and safe environment. The eggs will hatch into larvae, which will then undergo metamorphosis on the 10th day into baby clownfish. They can be fed freshly hatched brine shrimp throughout this period. Diseases The tomato clownfish is very hardy and will stay disease-free as long as the water conditions are good. However, if you give them a reason to be stressed, such as poor water conditions or an improper diet, then they can suffer from ailments such as marine ick, hole in the head, droopsy, and velvet to name a few. To sum it up, if you're taking your first steps into the world of saltwater aquariums or are looking for the least hassle-free marine setup, then the tomato clownfish is ideal for you. Despite it being beginner-friendly, it is extremely pretty and has quite the personality. It's a fish that is readily available and often at great prices. So keeping these fish is a win-win situation, whichever way you look at it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to tap that like button and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. I will see you in the next video.